Hi, it's me again, Dr. Gaylor Bredovitas, and today we're gonna talk about laser hair removal, how it works, and why we need to do several sessions. To better understand how hair removal works, it is helpful to know the hair anatomy and the hair growth cycle. So here with me is an anatomy of a hair follicle. Pay close attention to two parts which are very important when doing laser hair removal. This is your hair and in the deeper layer is what we call the hair bulb and here is the hair bulge. This hair bulb is made up of multiplying cells that actually contribute to the nourishment and the growth of the hair follicle. The hair bulge is somewhere here in this area which also contains stem cells and contribute to the growth of the hair. Now we go to the hair cycle. So at any given time, your hair can be in any of the three cycles called the anagen, the catagen, and the telogen phase. The anagen phase is also known as the growing phase. So in this stage, you will see that the hair is um, growing rapidly, the stem cells are multiplying, and the hair follicle is right there near the bulge and the dermal papilla. Different body parts have different um, length of anagen phase. For example, the hair on our scalp. The anagen phase is somewhere between two to six years. If you don't cut it, it can grow really long compared to our eyebrows, our legs, our underarms. The anagen phase only lasts about 30 to 45 days. That's why they don't grow as long as our scalp hair. The next phase, which is the catagen phase, is what we call the regression phase or it's when the hair stops multiplying, it stops growing, and the hair follicle slightly moves away from the dermal papilla. The last phase, which is the telogen phase or what we call the resting phase, it's really far from the dermal papilla and it's actually not close to the bulge anymore. How do lasers work in removing hair? Lasers um, emit very specific beams na merong very specific targets. So depending on which laser you use, you can target blood, you can target water, and you can target melanin. Now in the case of laser hair removal, our target will be melanin. So para maging effective yung laser hair removal mo, kailangan ma-damage nito yung hair bulb and the hair bulge. When the laser beam emits light, it targets the melanin in the hair bulb. When the melanin in your hair absorbs the energy, it converts it into heat and dissipates it or spreads it dun sa mga katabing structures. The dermal papilla, the, all the multiplying cells here, the cells in the bulge, they're actually colorless. You are using the hair to damage the surrounding structures. It is in the anagen phase where the hair follicle is closest to the bulb and the bulge. Dun sa catagen intelligent phase, medyo umurong na siya and malayo-layo na siya dun sa target structures natin. This is why only the hair in the anagen phase are effectively removed by the laser treatment. Another thing to consider is the ratio between anagen and telogen hair. In the underarms and the bikini, it's around 30% anagen hair. And on the legs, it's only 20%. This explains why underarm and bikini laser hair removal have better results than leg hair removal. We need to do several laser treatment sessions and we need to space them four to eight weeks apart to allow for the other hairs in the catagen and telogen phase to shift to the anagen phase so that they can be effectively treated with the laser. How many laser treatments do you need to do to achieve significant results? I tell my patients that you will need at least six to eight sessions to see significant hair reduction. The results are maintained post-treatment, but I normally advise my patients to come back for retouch if needed after six to 12 months. Ano ba yung mga recommendations or tips before you can actually do your treatment? Remember, that the laser targets pigment. Therefore, it is not advisable to get your treatment done if you came from the beach or you're tanned because the melanin on your skin will compete with the melanin on your hair. So, mababawasan yung laser that will reach the hair kasi i-absorb din siya ng melanin on your skin. This is also the reason why um, I don't do laser hair removal on patients with very dark skin because pwede sila magkaroon ng blisters, ng burns, and more pigmentation. I always advise my patients to shave either the day before or 
um, before coming to my clinic, before we do the laser treatment. If you don't shave the hair, target ito ng laser and it can cause damage on your skin. So waxing, blocking, pulling the hair is discouraged. Kasi when you do that, tinanggal mo na yung target ng laser. So the laser will not have anything to absorb the energy and nothing will happen. Cutting, shaving, depilatory creams are okay. Kasi, you preserve the hair underneath. And lastly, because melanin is the target of the laser, hindi siya mag work dun sa mga may blonde hair or very light hair or even red hair. Are there any complications or meron bang mga side effects from laser hair removal? I'm having what we call perifollicular edema or konting pamamaga surrounding the hair follicle and redness is normal. To avoid complications, side effects, and undesirable outcome, it's important that the one doing the treatment has a good understanding of the hair biology, of how the laser works, and how to deal with undesirable side effects when they happen. And finally, if you want to undergo a laser treatment or a laser hair removal treatment, I recommend to visit a well-trained, um, board-certified dermatologist who has done several treatments on a lot of patients. And last, 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 if you enjoy this video, you like what I said and you learned something from it, please click the subscribe button or the like button. I will continue to make more informative videos related to the skin for you.